Hey guys, welcome to another walkthrough. Not a full tutorial because uh, it took quite a bit of time to put this project together, especially tweaking the parameters. So I don't necessarily want to go through that whole thing whilst you guys are watching over my shoulder. I will make mistakes all the time and I don't like that. So I'll start actually with the finished project and I'll walk you guys through it. And of course, these projects are available on my website uh, website right now, free for you to download. And if you do something with it, I would really love it if you could drop uh, a link in the comments or something or drop me an email, because I always like to see what you guys are doing with, um, with the uh, information I provide. So um, before we go into the actual project itself, just a, a word of warning, uh, it can get heavy over time, the project, when you play it especially in high quality or when you render it especially when you get uh, through the timeline so at first it is still quite light but the particle buildup will be such that it uh, could well slow down your computer so just bear that in mind and save you work often um, so the whole thing starts with a text node so I've got here a simple text neon that text serves as an input first and foremost of the particle emitter where it basically serves as a region so it basically says okay where there are pixels i.e uh, not the transparent bit around here so if we, i just show this um, this is all transparent right here you've got the non-transparent uh, pixels so from there it will basically use that as a region saying here i can generate particles okay um, it does that only at the very first frame. It's set to 40 here, and then it will sort of distribute the pixels randomly. So it starts with 40 particles, okay? That feeds then into a p-spawn, and the p-spawn will basically spawn off pixels, uh, pixels, particles of the uh, initial particles. Um, and the trick here is that these uh, spawned particles have got a tiny bit of a velocity very very small that means they will move about uh, and then as those particles that have been spawned will spawn other particles you basically get this growing effect and so that's that's the basic principle but uh, if i disable this p custom for a moment and if we then look at the results in viewport 2 oh, then you can see what's happening. They just go everywhere, right? They're not confined to the text. So at first I thought, okay, maybe I need to uh, make use of a, a bounce node or something like that. And it would work, but it is very heavy on the processor and it's not quite as organic. So what I, I did instead is take the same text and use that as an input into the P custom. And if you look at the inter and uh, interim tab here, you've got a little expression here. Um, basically, I won't go into the detail, but it uh, reads the uh, input image uh, at the position of the particle. And then using that, if we go into the particle tab, there's this kill expression. So it reads e if I1 equals zero, so that means if there's nothing there, if it's transparent, and sorry, I should have sent that, the um, it's reading the alpha value. Um, if, so if that is, if there is, if it's fully transparent, if it equals zero, then kill of the particle, i.e. if the particle that's moving about, if that goes beyond the boundaries, it will automatically be killed off. And then you get this sort of illusion that the particles are confined to the text. But as a matter of fact, they're not. It's just that the ones exceeding the boundaries will be killed off. 
Okay, so that is the critical bit really of the effect. So it is really rather simple, right? Uh, there is a bit more to it. Uh, you see this um, sort of color type effect, and that's done by an expression here for the red channel, and you could do it for any channel. I'm making this dependent on uh, time plus the particle ID. Uh, times seven, but it's a bit random. You could do, do times 15 or 20, whatever, and gives us will give a slightly different effect. But it means basically that over time, the particles are cycling through some colors, right? And depending uh, depending on what you have the green and blue set as, um, you know, the effect will differ or you can uh, you know, change the sinus to a co sine to a cosine. You can change well anything really to your liking. But that gives that that sort of um, you know uh, color cycling effect. Okay, so if we have a look there, um, there's one more. And that's a P custom here. I put it in a separate P custom, and what this one does, it's basically again a kill expression, and the base says if the time exceeds 250, start killing off particles randomly because otherwise it will keep growing and growing and growing and then until your computer will blow up basically and then basically once it's um, over 250 and once a certain random value related to the particle id and the time exceeds 0 to 93 that's just a a selected number then kill off the particle now, the higher this number is, 0 0.93, the less likely it is that a, a particle will be killed off. Okay, so if you would set this really low, say 0 0.1, they would be sort of all particles would disappear within 10 frames. So that's sort of the reasoning behind this P custom here. If you would remove that, disable that, uh, really try to play it through and it just won't work. It will at a certain point. Um, stop your computer from working altogether. Well, maybe not that, but it will probably crash uh, Fusion. Uh, then we render it out, as we can see over here. Uh, we feed it into a merge tool with a camera. Now the camera is set to orthographic, so it's not sort of, I'm not going to really explain it, but the Z position or Z position of the camera will not matter. Um, there's a reason why I do this, but I won't go uh, into the detail here. And then I feed it into a renderer, and then it looks still pretty, well, pretty boring. It looks interesting, but nowhere near what you saw in the end. And really, it is just a few notes that are needed here to get the final effect, and the vector distortion is the most important one. Once we pop this in, you get this effect. Now, vector distortion, in principle, would make use of uh, vector channels you can set them um, you can actually output those in the renderer uh, over here but for this particular effect I just make use of the color channel the color channel red because it looked cute and I changed a bit of the scaling and I added a bit of glow and then you get this really cool effect right and especially at the start where you saw a bit of that you know almost that electricity type thing that's basically because of the colors, uh, the particles cycling through the colors. And you get this cool effect. Now, then I take an instance of the original text and I set it to outline and I merge it over this and I have it as an overlay apply mode. And then you get this sort of the glowing edges. And then finally, is just a bit of a highlight and I noticed the highlight one is really slowing down the rendering so if you have a bit of a slower computer you can sort of remove that um, but it does give a nice little uh, touch and that's really all there is to it um, now there's one last thing I would like to show to you guys and that is the situation where you have a word that's slightly longer and maybe the characters are a bit smaller in that case, you'll probably need to increase the number of particles in the first frame, right? Because otherwise there may not be sufficient particles out there to ensure that all the characters will be covered, right? So originally when I tried this example, I had this, uh, this one set to 40 as well, and it led to an incomplete text. Now, uh, so one way to deal with this is to increase the number. 
Uh, but what you can also do, and often you do that in conjunction, is to use the random seed. So sometimes with a particular seed that basically provides the randomness, right? Uh, it just doesn't flow as you want it to flow. Maybe it doesn't fill all the characters or it doesn't fill in the way you want it to. Just try a different random seed and see how that works for you. Now, um, that's probably all I want to say about this. Maybe one little tip, uh, little pro tip. If you really want to further restrict uh, the particles from emitting, maybe restricted to certain parts, maybe to ensure you always cover the O on this side, the R on this side, right, to enforce a certain flow, you could use a paint note, right? So to briefly show you, so if we, oops, add a background note, uh, set the alpha to zero, then add a paint node, add a merge after the text to see what we're doing, and add this in here. Uh, and let's show this here, right? So if we then select the paint node, then we can basically say, okay, here, 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 maybe here, 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 that's where I want the particles to be emitted. Now, we won't, don't want, um, so anything going out here, of course, would be killed off anyways. But if we now take away this merge and then use, take this one out and use this as an input for the P emitter, then again, particles will only be emitted from these spots. So you can drive it a bit more accurately. So just experiment with it. So um, yeah, I think that was all there is to it. Maybe one last little thing, uh, the P custom here. As you may have noticed, uh, the colors uh, for the example are a bit different than my original example, right? It's more like a greeny type color, right? You may or may not like this. Uh, that's because I just changed the colors in here. If you like the original ones, just copy them over from uh, the example here. So uh, yeah, uh, head over to my website, download these. Uh, please do like this video, do leave a comment. And if you wanna share this video, that would be even better. So have a great day and I'll see you guys later. Take care, bye-bye.